So guys, today we're going to be doing or mixing this up for reviews, as you guys can probably tell by the title, and we're going to be doing actually a gun review. And this is not the first gun review, but this is the first gun review I've done in a very long time. And before I get started with this, as always, and of course, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you guys want to see more awesome content like this. But I also have another note here to add, and that is please, I don't ask much, or I don't ask this a lot, but please leave in the comment section below if you guys are interested in seeing more gun reviews not just on survival rifles like this one but all types of guns from AR-15s, Glock 21, stuff like that. It doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be super survivally, but I'm kind of thinking of trying to incorporate more gun reviews into the channel. So let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing some run and gun videos and just some overall gun review videos on the channel. So with that out of the way, let's get into this gun review now. So like I said, today we are going to be doing a gun review on the AR-7 survival rifle. Now for some of you more dedicated subscribers or the ones who've been around for a while will know that I do have this and I've been using it. I have been using this when I want to go out into the woods and have a really compact setup. Now if you guys really original subscribers would know that I usually run a Henry lever action and I've for many years have loved the Henry lever action but the thing that I really disliked about it was it's one its weight and two its size the fact of the matter was it was not very compact it was pretty heavy and I always had to carry it in by hand and so it was never very fun to carry in and the fact of the matter was actually a large portion of the time I wasn't even using the gun so what I decided to do was go over to something like the survival rifle that I could put in my backpack and have the gun option if I wanted to do any small game hunting but at the same time not have to deal with this rifle that I'm moving around or just dealing with overall. So that's why I gravitated toward the AR-7 survival rifle and that's another reason why I carry a handgun a lot in the woods because once again I'm not hunting as much but I still want to have the option of one if I have to emergency hunt definitely and if I have to defend myself for whatever reason I want the ability. So those are the two primary reasons why I've gravitated toward the AR-7, primarily the AR-7 for hunting, not really defense, but the handgun for defense. So that's the primary reason I went over to this rifle as opposed to my other rifles. I was, like I said, I really, really gravitated toward the size and the compactness of this rifle. So now let me put this thing together and just go overall the uh, function of this rifle. And as always, I'm also going to be rolling in use footage as I talk. Now it's all assembled and I would have assembled it on film, but I'm really not feeling well today. So I could not assemble this thing as fast as you normally could. But that's just a personal issue with me feeling really under the weather today. So I'm going to be rolling in a little bit of shooting footage with this. And ironically, I do want to quickly vouch for the reliability of this gun. There are two hangups that I caught on film, but those were actually, the in the couple hundred rounds that I ran through this rifle and other people ran through this rifle, those were actually the only hangups that I actually had were on film. Those two hangups were the only two that I had through this rifle, and I hope you guys can see there what I did on that third clip. I'll roll in like a third clip. I think it's a third clip. Uh, I actually put in those two rounds, and they were both light primer strikes, and shot both of them, and they fired first time on the second try or they fired the second try of both of them in a row so as far as reliability on this rifle goes I haven't had any hang-ups aside from those two and I'm going to say that those are more of an ammo malfunction because they seemed to just hit and strike but not detonate and 22 is notorious for doing that so aside from those two, uh, the rounds that have been run through this thing have been very reliable and that is a really good thing to see through a semi-automatic because some semi-automatic 22s can be rather unreliable. This one, however, was quite reliable. Another thing I've really enjoyed about this rifle, and it's kind of surprising, or at least a little surprising for me, and we're not talking great distances here because obviously this is not really designed to be like a target rifle, but I have found the peep sights on this rifle, which is what it has here, dual peep sights, and 
I have it on the smaller setting of the peep sights, but for me, I found the peep sights to be really great uh, and very accurate, up to around 25 to 30 yards. I found it to be just fine. I can reliably hit very small targets, uh, around an inch size target, so it'd be really easy to small game hunt with this rifle, which is what its primary intention is. I have not necessarily done any super like target accuracy stuff. I have not ran any target ammunition through this gun just to see how well it performed in a super accuracy. But I will say as far as just general accuracy goes, it's just fine, especially for hunting. I would have no issues with this hunting small game. It is definitely accurate for that. Um, goes. I generally for the most part like it. I will say the only thing I find just a little bit weird about shooting the gun is that because of course due to the fact that this entire rifle like everything here goes into the stock. It has a very large stock as you guys can see and so that is a little bit awkward to shoot from but if you can get past that which it's not particularly hard to get past that the shooting is really just fine. The trigger is not the most and this thing is unloaded for you guys and sorry for those who don't like dry firing but the trigger is very crisp there's no creep in the trigger as you can see moment. there's no creep in the trigger it's just a smooth pull and a very clean break and then it does have a pretty nice reset if I can do this on camera <laughs> it's a little bit hard but you guys can hear it has a very loud and audible reset and there's second pull. So it's a very loud and audible reset and that's really nice because I am one of those people that likes to shoot to reset and so having a nice loud audible reset makes it really easy for multiple shots and getting, knowing where your reset is and so you can pull the trigger again. Aside from that, another thing I like about the shooting and ergonomics is that the magazine release is this bar right here, you guys can see, and it's easy to hit, not just with the secondary hand, but with the primary hand, and so it's really nice. Of course, the magazines do drop free, unloaded, so it is really nice if you just want to drop the magazine and load up your next one if you had to go into a more defensive situation, just whatever happens in a survival situation. That is nice. Once again, I do really like how easy to engage the magazine release is with the shooting hand. So you can do your shooting and then without you can just drop the magazine and with this other hand can be working on grabbing the next magazine and putting it in. Once again, also magazines go in pretty easy. There's no real hard click. Like you don't have to click it very hard. And once again, uh, like most things, it's very loud and positive. As you guys can tell, very loud and positive noise. So you can really tell when your magazine is in, when your trigger is reset. Those are things that I really like and they make the knowing of the state of condition of your firearm a lot easier when you're shooting. So, going on to the negatives and what I don't like about this rifle. Now I could go into a lot of things like how the ergonomics are a little bit funky and a whole bunch of different things but I'm primarily reviewing this rifle as a survival rifle so I'm kind of giving it a little bit of break on weird ergonomics and stuff like that and also like forward hand grip because there's really nothing like that because those things help save weight and once again this is a survival rifle so when you get into a survival rifle rifle, you're pretty much expecting to not have as many functional things and this needs to be more bare bones, minimalistic, and still just functional as a firearm but not have a lot of amenities. So that's kind of how I'm critiquing this and so for the primary thing, the only thing I've really found that I didn't like about this rifle, and once again I'll roll in footage, is while I was doing winter testing because I did have this rifle at the tail end of our winter and so I did not do this like I didn't do the submerged into submersion test at like 50 below but I think I did around like 20 below and at that I put this rifle just I took it like it was all disassembled and in the stock and I took it put it completely in the snow buried it completely in the snow and then I threw it or and then I just let it sit there for about two hours and then I came back out and did a series of drop tests on this rifle just you know like side drop tests I'll be rolling in the footage as we go along but like side drop test and the one problem and I'm gonna actually disassemble this rifle to show you guys at least partly so the part that broke uh, is like so 
when I had it all assembled kind of like this, but I had all the rifle stuff in there, uh, the one part that did break because it got super cold and stuff was this thinner side. As you guys can see, there's an offset here and that's to account for the barrel. The barrel actually comes in at kind of like a sideways angle. And so like the barrel sits right in this side. So that's why this has to be a little bit thicker on this side. But this thinner side here, due to the fact that it was thinner and made of a more kind of plastic and less of like a polymer, uh, this side actually broke. Now that did not function, or that did not stop the functionality of the rifle. I was still able to assemble the receiver, put the receiver in here. It was more of a cosmetic thing than anything, but uh, Henry did replace the stock on that so in case you guys are wondering like why the stock doesn't have that broken piece uh henry replaced the stock but the original stock for this rifle did break right around this area and that's because uh, like i said this side plastic is just a little bit too thin to withstand a drop and so pretty much i just i think i dropped it more like this like that and when it hit the snow and it was hard packed snow that it hit once again being chilled as it was this piece snapped off so that was my only concern with it aside from or that was one of my concerns with this rifle uh, in cold weather the only other concern I had was and I'm going to show you guys here the only other concern I had about this rifle, and sorry this thing's still a little bit dirty, but there's uh, quite a few cutouts around here and hopefully you guys can see them. Uh, these different cutouts, I think there's three of them. Yeah, there's three different cutouts here in this barrel. And I understand that those are primarily to save weight and they definitely do that. But what I was noticing with this is if this barrel was ever dropped in the snow, like I accidentally dropped it in the snow or even purposefully, but I think primarily accidentally dropped in the snow, uh, snow could collect in any three of these cutouts. And when you go to assemble this rifle, it could possibly hinder if the thing was really packed with snow it could possibly hinder the it could possibly hinder the ability to take this rifle back down if that snow became ice it could possibly hinder the ability of taking this thing down or apart because it could get snow or it could get water which would become ice all up in this area and it could possibly hinder the ability of this takedown mechanism. So the only other thing that I kind of dislike about this rifle is this hand grip or this little grip here for the receiver pull or pulling back the bolt. Uh, the only thing I really have a complaint against that is that I wish that it had more of a detent so that it would actually stick. If you pulled it meaningfully, it would stick in the open position or if you closed, it would also have another detent. This is what I wish. Uh, to stay here because right now in its current condition just in its regular condition and configuration this has no tension on it or there's no divots or there's no divots or anything here so this thing can just flop around and be open or be closed and what i really dislike about that is that sometimes i'll go to rack it once and then I'll want to rack it again, or if there's some misfire, I need to rack it, and I kind of want this bolt handle open, I am not really allowed to have that because there's no detent keeping it open or keeping it closed. So this bolt handle kind of just does what it pleases. As you guys can see, like, there's really no, there's really no tension on it, so it kind of just does whatever it feels like it wants to. And so that's kind of the only other thing I dislike about that. And those downsides that's basically all that i really found against it once again not going into wonky ergonomics which are something to be expected if you are wondering this thing does have quite a large buttstock to accommodate the receiver barrel magazines all that such stuff and so it does have a little bit weird ergonomics of course there's no forward hand grip you can pretty much hold it anywhere on here because there is a or this barrel is shrouded in like a rubbery plastic kind of polymer and so this barrel does not get very hot very fast because of that kind of rubbery 
or because of that kind of polymer coating on the barrel. So if you had to, you could definitely hold the barrel, but it is kind of weird. And so as you guys notice, when I'm shooting generally, I like to hold it like right here. And I think that's where most people hold it, just because it's more comfortable to hold it here. It feels more natural as well. Uh, it's better for magazine releases so that you can just you know, drop your magazine or so that when you're shooting and you're out, you can just drop your magazine. This can hit the magazine out. You can pull your next one and just go right back at it. So that is what I really like about it. And so some of the ergonomics are hit and miss, but that's more due to the fact that I had to accommodate being a all-in-one package. And this is not the natural state of this rifle. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much my review and use opinion on the Henry Arms survival rifle, AR-7 survival rifle. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and it hasn't been too long or boring. And once again, guys, please do not forget to go down in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think of gun reviews for my channel. What do you guys want to see in particular as far as guns go? And would you guys just even want to see gun reviews in general? So anyways, guys, that's all for now. And I'm out.